Hello creatives, welcome to my channel. Welcome to the month of December, which means 12 Designs of Christmas is back. This is a series I have done and I think I will continue to do. It's 12 designs across the month of December, all leading up to Christmas. And this year we're doing time frames. So basically the last 12 decades. In my previous video, we did the year of 1910, which is kind of futuristic, kind of geometric, and very topography based. So if you want to see that, I'll leave it up here on the screen. Also, if you guys like these types of historical art history videos, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe. And today we're doing the year of 1920, the Roaring Twenties. Everything is glitz and glam and gold and all that such. So we are going to create a beautifully designed Christmas card all invoking art deco style from the 1920s. So everything's going to be very decadent, gold, silver, black, maybe dark green, who knows, we'll get into it. It's going to have all the art deco lines. Think of the great Gatsby and like the flappers and stuff like that. It's going to be very much like that. So let's dive into Illustrator on the iPad. Alright, we're in the year 1920. I'm going to open my layers panel. I'm going to add a few layers here. This first one is going to be the background, which is going to basically be the background color. I'm thinking, shall we do navy? Should we do navy? I think we might do navy. I'm going to choose a deep dark navy color here. Let's go into our blues. Do like a royal blue type color. I do have a 5 by or five by seven, a seven by five artboard here for a Christmas card that will be long and then clip open. Choose the shape, square shape tool and create a background here. There we go. Awesome. That is our background. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that layer in place and go to layer two where we're going to make all of our accents and all of our intricate designs and pieces. I'm going to choose like a nice gold color. I'm just going to add the navy to my swatches and I also want to do a silver. Let's do a silver. There we go. And of course we have white so our color scheme is going to be very very simple but effective. Also what do you guys think of my decor? I kind of decided to uh, dress up the place a little bit for the season. All right, let's get into designing this. I want to use gold, first of all, because gold and silver were everywhere during this era, even in the graphic design field. So we're going to make a beautiful little Christmas scene, I think, on this little Christmas card. It's going to be very simplistic. Um, have you ever seen those um, Christmas decor, like, wire Christmas trees that are in, like, a little cork stand or whatever, and you just set them, like on your table as like little place setting kind of things. I'm thinking kind of like along those lines basically. Let's choose the triangle tool. I love the fact that Illustrator has the triangle tool already as your basis here, which is so, so nice. I'm gonna choose that. I'm gonna do a very unconstrained triangle. Now I don't want it filled in like that. I kind of want it as a stroke. Let me zoom in for all of you. I'm going to increase my stroke in my properties panel. I'm going to increase it to three, I think. There we go. Duplicate that shape. Now, the Art Deco era was very geometrical, very similar to futurism, futuristic design from the 1910s. That was still kind of lingering in the 1920s because you had all those sharp lines that made everything look like a diamond basically and that is kind of what I'm going for here with our little Christmas tree that we are creating. I'm gonna have a few Christmas trees here. I'm going to select all three of these because it's quite fun to do um, artwork in different styles from different eras. I found it to be very inspiring. Let's see, let's do... I mean I kind of like the way that's looking however I kind of want it just to be simple like that. So I went into the combined shapes icon over here, which looks like two overlapping pages, which is right down below the brand new speech bubble for comments. And I chose combine all because they are overlapping shapes. And once you combine all, do not forget to choose convert to path. Otherwise it will remain the same 
separate path lines. You want it as the path lines from the shape you just made. So don't forget to choose that. There we go. We have a nice, beautiful Christmas tree here. Now, I am going to take this and see if I can do a gradient along the stroke. It will not let me. Okay, so in this case, since I want to have a gradient across the stroke to make it look like it's shining and shimmering, you can go over here to the objects icon in the right toolbar, select ungroup, it'll ungroup it, select again the object icon and then you can create stroke outline. Now this is what happens whenever you combine shapes together and make new paths, you always have to ungroup them first and then you can create a stroke outline which is what I want. And the stroke outline allows the stroke to go from just one individual like path line of a stroke to being an actual shape. So it kind of just like expands and fills in, if that, make, if that makes sense. Let me see if I can show you in outline mode. So we went from this to this with the create stroke outline. So that is the main difference. Um, by the way, if you don't know how to switch your preview um, options, it's right here, this top, top icon, all the way in here in the right corner with the eyeball. You select that, and there is preview mode, preview mode, outline mode, and transparency grid mode. So those are your view modes. I typically stay in preview mode because that's what it's going to look like when it goes to print. Now, I do assure you that this is a deep navy color, however, my camera doesn't seem to like navy, so it's probably going to show it as purple, but it is navy. Let's zoom in here. So we have one Christmas tree already, let's go ahead and select it, and now that the stroke is no longer a stroke, it's a shape, the stroke color went to the fill color. So now we can add ingredients to it to make it look oh so shimmery. But first, let's choose our colors for it. I want a nice, bright, light color for our highlights. And then I want a nice, deep, dark color. Maybe not brown, but a nice, deep, dark color for the shadow. All right, let's put it back to that. And you can always save your swatches. You can even take a picture and have whatever's in the picture saved as swatches, which is so nice. It's a brand new feature as well. I did not go over that one, but it is a nice feature. All right, I'm gonna choose a, a linear gradient, which is the first option here. You can choose different ones, but I'm just gonna choose linear. Linear is all I need. Select the lightest color for this selector point. I'm gonna add a selector point by tapping anywhere on the gradient line. And I'm going to choose our normal mid-tone gold color. And then for the last color selector over here, I'm going to choose that dark color. There we go. That's looking quite cool. Now it looks very shimmery. So I'm going to add a few more of these by just duplicating them and moving them over. And now we're going to do some beautiful like little sunbursts and we're going to choose our topography. Now the topography for this era was very, very ornate, very simple. A lot of the fonts around this time would be something like Cormier or like um, Metropolis was a big one. It kind of looked like that old movie star like banner across the theater type of font. They also like Boris typeface as well. You also had like Nova Deco and Bella Rose as well and Jorn, like all of those. However, I don't have all of those. So what I'm going to do instead, let me choose my type tool here. Lorem Ipsum, of course, it appears. Let's, let's make them gold for now. Let's move him over. And then I'm going to type in, whoop. Just a very simple Merry Christmas. Just for now. All right, and then our properties panel, if you have your text selected and then the text section underneath your properties panel, you can go into your pro your fonts by choosing this little arrow to change it. And then we can even do, you know, Museo Slab might also be within that region, but we're gonna go to more fonts down here at the bottom and they have a whole art deco section to choose from, which is so amazing. There was also another font that was like really famous during that time, but let's see what they have in Art Deco. 
Oh, they have a lot. Okay. Some of these are not... I mean, Mendel Sands Dawn Medium. Yeah, kind of. But I want it to be a little bit more... Oh. Love that. Quiche is very similar to the Art Deco, like the main Art Deco Metropolis font. Although it's a little too, like, black letter kind of um, weight. However, uh, Levette Banner Black is very nice. It's still a bit too thick. Ooh, wow, look at Fairwater. Ooh, look at that. Now that's a font. <laughs> Maybe I should have used that for the futuristic video. But, ooh, look at her. Um, let's <laughs> let's choose something different. Um, as fun as that is, however, I kind of want to do one that's a little bit less, like, bam. Ooh. Broadacre. Broadacre's a good one. Let's also do, let's see. Let's look at quiche. Mm, what do you think? Mm, I don't know. I don't think it goes with the trees. Love it. Love it is very thick. Let's see. It just has that option. Okay. Hmm. Maybe if I increase the spacing on it. That could work. Let's shrink it down a little bit. Uh, the way I'm doing that is in the quick selection menu here. There is two T's in the menu. If you select that, it allows you to change your text size. So I think we'll do that. I did not put this on its own layer, so let me go ahead and do that now. You can drag and drop after opening each layer. You can, oh, drag and drop it, drag and drop it from layer to layer to switch the layering of what, uh, to switch what element is on what layer. Now I'm going to add a very similar gradient that I did with the Christmas trees to this one. You can't add a gradient to a font. So we're going to make sure this is the font that I want to use. I'm going to go over here to the right toolbar, and the right toolbar has an outline text. Just choose outline text. Very, very simple. Press done. And then you can go into the object icon on the right toolbar, ungroup it. There we go. And now they're all their own individual shapes. So now we're going to apply that same gradient that we did with the Christmas trees down here to the letters to make them look very shiny. All right, let's add a gradient to every single one of these. By the way, my camera decided to showcase the navy color now, so there you go. Now you know what color it is. All right, gradient linear. I could do other uh, gradients, however, linear is just very simple and easy to do. If I wanted to make something a lot more intricate, then I would definitely do like a freeform gradient for sure. That looks so much better than just being a flat gold color, yeah? One helpful tip if you have a font that you've outlined and you're trying to do uh, something similar to this and you have the same letter, save yourself some time. Go into your uh, precision icon under the properties panel. Turn your rulers on. There's a ruler slider here. And I'm going to change this color <laughs> to green. Very appropriate for Christmas time. There we go. Now that you have your rulers, you can drag, tap and drag a guide down from either side and it allows you to have guides so that way you can measure up each object with each other. So take this R, I'm going to delete it. Take this R, duplicate it, hold down my touch selector, select that move tool in the quick selection menu, and then just move it over. Saves you some time.
So now we have our glowing font. You can also select your guides and delete them if you need to, if you don't want to use them anymore. So we have a very nice glowing Merry Christmas up here. And we have our nice shining shimmering Christmas trees. But they are so, so beautiful. Now let's see about doing an outline. I kind of want to do an outline above the background. Let's open the background layer. I kind of want to do a gold outline that is very similar to the Christmas trees. Let's choose our square shape tool. Oh, it looks like a sheet of gold. Look at that. Wow. Now, unfortunately, with a stroke, we cannot have the gold color. So we're going to swap it over to our stroke, increase our stroke line. Let's see, is that a bit too much? That looks pretty good, actually. Let's just move this out slightly. There we go, I may have to move this in slightly. There we go. And then just like we did before, we're going to go into the object selection, uh, object icon, create stroke outline. And then we're going to add that gradient to it because I really, really like this gradient. It is quite a beautiful piece here. There we are. So now it looks a little bit more sheeny, a little bit more shiny, and you can foil this as uh, uh, however much you want. There we are. I may bring this down after we're done with our sunbursts. So let's go into a new layer um, from the tree layer. Let's just name this trees and font. Done. There we go. Deselect. Let's add a new layer and this is going to be sunburst there we go sunburst just because there's gonna look like sunburst instead of snowflakes there we go I just chose this um, the line tool which is nested in the shape tool over here and I created a very simple line now as you can see the um, fill color is not there because this is a stroke so it went directly to black and I'm going to switch that over to our gold color and do the same process create stroke outline and then we're going to apply the gradient to it there we go and now we can do a radial repeat under the repeat tool over here oh I did not know you could do that well look at that very simplistic. There we go. I'm just going to take half of this away because we don't need all of it. And as far as the spacing goes, there we go. I'm just going to pull that handle. Lovely. Now we have a little sunburst happening here. I might even allow it to do a few more. Whoops. Just like so. On both sides. Just like so. Move it down a little bit. Alright. There we go. A little sunburst. Something to make it like all sparkly and shiny. And I'm just going to duplicate that. create just a line here and here under Merry Christmas. There we go. And that is 
our Art Deco Christmas card. What do you guys think? I think it came out so good. You can add a lot more to this. You can really go all out. The 20s were all about the glitz and the glam and all that stuff. Like I can even do like little dots here and there if I wanted to. But that is the 1920s. Everything was always like in line, very geometric, very all put together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about art history and I will see you all in my next video for 1930. See you soon, creatives.